Hello. I'm going to be talking about the Obi-Wan Kenobi suite that I wrote in the spring, early summer. And I was thinking about ways to do this. And I think the coolest way would be to um, just record my screen and talk casually and listen to some drafts, talk about the suite itself as it exists on here, and then go through the um, writing that I did, which is about 10 pages. And I attempted to record it the other night, but it was uh, my handwriting. My handwriting is difficult for me to read. And I am. it's because I am not patient. So I think I used to be better at writing words slowly, but now they kind of blend together and are very flat so and I'm, I'm writing it and I know what I'm writing but then I try to read it and it doesn't work out but uh okay here we go so the Obi-Wan suite um exists in this folder and I'm going to show this DAW screenshot this is what it looks like uh here I'll probably bust this out on the screen um, then the video editor thing, but, uh, from left to right is how it progressed, so you'll see, uh, two drafts before the actual first main theme track that I wrote, and then next is the Inquisition Escape, and then you'll see that adagio on the last quarter. Then, there's a sketch, uh, on the way and far right side, you'll see little, little, uh, dots, those are, um, that was a sketch for the Inquisition theme, which I got, which I pulled out of the Inquisition escape and was like, hey, this is, it was, well, it exists, it was like, why is this material here? I'm going to see if I can expound on it. And so I did, and I'll play a little bit, or I'll just play the snippet for you now. This is the Inquisition theme sketch fragment. Okay, cool. So that was that. So right away you'll hear the um, Imperial March nods and then also just straight Imperial March uh, kind of over top everything. And I was going to play a little bit for you too. Here it is. That's with uh, just a piano sketch. Here it is with an instrument. Something like that. So it's a it's a cool idea and it stems from the Inquisition Escape where there's a line where it's like and you'll you could hear that. So I it started with that and then I kinda pulled it in. I think there's also a nod the boo boo boop is a nod to the in the march, Imperial March is a really nice woodwind passage. And then also in I think Empire, there's a passage like that that I can't recall where it is, but somewhere in there. Anyway, so it was cool. I just, I ran out of time. I was trying to, well, not I ran out of time. I just, I was set on what I had, which which was a three movement. It just felt, it just felt good. So anyway, there's, there's a sketch, maybe another time. That could be somewhere for something else. Because um, there's lots of cool nods to 
uh, some other Star Wars material. But um, next, I'm gonna go down the list. This is the first draft of the main theme. When I read my writing, I'll kind of share my experience of what it was, what it was like in the early portions of it. But this was the first draft. So these are drafts. So they they are drafts. So. Uh, this is how I get stuff down quickly, and the plane is, the plane is atrocious, atrocious, atrocious. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a draft, so please bear with it. But here's the first one I had right after listening to the concert and then uh, reading the transcription by Frank. <laughs> So that was that. I am going to put a limiter because I forgot to put a limiter on. Uh, ducking source. Okay. So sorry. Um, so there's probably clipping there. That was the first draft. That, I, there's a portion of that that I like that in Williams' uh, theme, there was a harmony at the, uh, at the end of this, at the end of this, uh, this um, motive for Obi Wan. There's a really nice harmony that is very. Um, it's just a beautiful. It's just a beautiful harmony. I did not get. I did not for whatever reason. I did not include that in the final, and one of many, not regrets, but one of many things that I wish I had done was to incorporate that harmony because it's so good. Let's see if I go back to it here. <laughs> Okay, cool. So it's just really pretty. I didn't get it in to the final, and I wish I did, but it's all right. Um, the next one, that was scrapped pretty quickly because I didn't like some of the... Well, I just didn't like it. So I went to a second one, and here's that second one. So I got that same harmony in there again, and I think that one was a that one was scrapped because I I think I was just figuring out some of the harmonies and how how I wanted to voice it. But that great harmony is there specifically in the um, in the low pitches, uh, and uh, didn't make it in. It didn't make it in. Um, going down the list. I have an Inquisition escape file from June 27th. So I finished this. I finished this the suite really quickly because I wanted to share it, and I was just so excited. So, um, but I learned a lot about the publishing it, and I had <coughs> <coughs> had an opportunity to. Have a little bit more time, a little bit more time to um, uh, make an edit, which is dangerous because I will just edit forever. But um, specifically in this Inquisition Escape, there were horns in the the YouTube video that I have is the older edit of this where the horns don't align, 
And I also remember spending like two hours rendering different timpani round robin hits. And that's an unfortunate side effect of what I need to not be doing. But um, I ended up landing on this this uh, perform performance. And I was able to kind of align the horns more and... Uh, so that's what, that's what you hear in the final one. Um, under that is the, some screenshots of my face playing instruments with my eyebrows kind of going crazy. I, my, and you'll see, probably when you just saw me perform that, when I perform, and part of the, part of the reason I don't do a lot of video performances is because my eyebrows, my eyebrows react to different, or rather, I feel like they're attached to different pitches in a bad way. And for brass players out there, you probably saw my embouchure too. When I play, I I almost bite at the pitch, which is not good. And I think it was another thing, not not regrettable, but something that I noticed after I published and shared this is my... The phrasing, especially for the boom, ba 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 ba, even when I sing it, I shorten stuff. But um, the recording of it is well, just a professional musician would really would really know how to phrase that better. And I I need to next time I do something like this, I I have to make sure I carry the phrase through rather than split it up. I it sounds very kind of like uh, plumpy in this recording and I need to work a little better at phrasing um phrasing everything out uh more professionally so that's something I could do um underneath there a bunch of snippets for twitter there is oh I went through a bunch of album art versions um and then there's blah 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 blah. oh the Chris Seidel oh yeah so this is something I'll talk about in the in the uh, video too, but there is a um, transcription of a cue from episode four, A New Hope, 4M2, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and this, I'll talk about it, well, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to talk about what I'm going to talk about, but this is, I'll, I'll put this up on the screen, this was really helpful in just learning just kind of guessing because I, when I wrote this it wasn't the ev- stuff wasn't out yet and just that Williams material had had been released and it was so igniting to uh, my ear so I this was so cool it was uploaded I think like two days before that theme premiered and um, so I was just looking through it there's so much oh well, I'll just say it there's there's so much material in this in this queue. It's like 32 bars and it's just so jam-packed of like everything, textures, uh like even thematic stuff that you could you could make um you could expand upon. So, I ended up using it and over at the on the second page to the right bar um uh, bar 28, there's a uh, figure in the, a solo horn figure that I ended up overlapping with the Anakin and Obi-Wan um, material from Revenge of the Sith. And it worked out really cool. There, it, It's, yeah, when I talk about the music a little more, I'll, I'll kind of go into that. But this was really cool just to have and look at and also just kind of marvel at how many how many how many different textures man i can't say that word either textures textures there are and um being able to just have that wealth of um such cool stuff to pull from so that's that uh i got old renders when i do stuff i just render the a render is like a a performance to me so it's not um it's, my how I work now in the last year especially is I'm working more at my 
um, at my job, at the job that pays, and a little, well, a lot less time having to spend on, on musical things. But something I found helpful is to, I would just bounce or render a performance and then listen to that on the way to work and make notes either in my head or on a piece of paper of uh, what I need to tackle to uh, to clean it up. I think <clears throat> writing is a big, one of the reasons I enjoy writing so much, it, much is that it's such a big um, puzzle. And sometimes it, Sometimes it drives me a little crazy, but in in a good way in that because I, I just love I just love the puzzle of composing and that's that's a uh well it's it is intertwined. Everything's kind of intertwined when I think when I want to talk about music, but one of the aspects of it is um and the joy I get is is figuring out um it's it's such like an Im, Im, improv um, puzzle that I get to figure out that I I make I create it and then I can figure out what it needs or where it needs to go next or what's going on that I don't like why is it something I am not happy with so those kind of things are I love about it so um. Yes, when I when I render stuff, it's it's cool to be able to problem solve in that way of of asking questions, and that's something my my um something I benefited from in my masters was spending time with with my, one of my teacher, my my mentor John Fitz Rogers, and he would he would always every time I'd come in, we'd sit at the piano, and it was always what is it? Okay, let's let's listen to it. What does it need? And at that time, I don't, I didn't, I don't think I understood it as well as I did now. And I absolutely am writing more than I was then. And I think I, uh, I understand why that's important now. So, anyway, that's a sidetrack. Uh, old renders, uh, mixing stuff. Um, blah 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 blah. More album art. Album art takes me forever, which is sometimes cool, but I wish it didn't take me forever. I have that transcription from Frank. I think I will bust that open on your screen as well. This was one of the first things that went went up on the JW fan forums, which I'll talk about in my reading. And he also transcribed the different ostinati, which I'll put up right now too. And there was three different ones that he identified. I ended up using just one of them. And I... Um, I think I just used it twice, once in the main theme and once in the Inquisition Escape. And it wasn't as, I didn't use it as, as Williams or, um, William Ross did. And I think I just, I'm not sure why I did that, but, uh, there's, these are cool. These are very cool. And there's a end credits, um. Part of the end credits of this show have have this is very much um, prevalent in that in the end credits music. I have still I have still not watched Kenobi, um, and I'll talk about that a little bit when I when I read through the thing. But um, it was fun, and I'll talk. About, I I think I'll probably have a big sidetrack about um, what Star Wars is and. And how it's a vehicle. I watched Andor last night. It today is Friday, the twenty third of September, twenty twenty two, and um, there was a show. There is a show on Disney Plus called Andor that uh, premiered this week. Man, my allergy. Also, my allergies. It is fall here, and excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. The um. Andor show premiered and it was it was excellent, and I during it I just thinking about Star Wars and and the internet and fans and story and 
religion, stuff like that. I'll probably go on a small tangent when I read the thing, but um, yeah, I have not, I have not, I still have not watched this, this show. I'm looking forward to it because I love, I, I just, I think I'm going to love it. I, I uh, played through Jedi Fallen Order and then I just love Ewan McGregor and um, Hayden Christensen. I'm excited to hear the music that Natalie Holt did and just excited to look at it because Star Wars is cool and it's fun and it's a vehicle for so many things. Anyway, before I go on a tangent like that, uh, I got a transcription and then uh, the recording of the concert and a recording of the end credits, which I just talked about with that Austin Audi figure. All right, cool. I'm going to get my notebook and this video, I'm looking at a timer and it is 20 minutes already. So we're going to keep going. And I, unfortunately, I do, I do think I clipped, but I will just tweak the audio there and it'll be okay. All right, BRB. All right. So we're just going to do some reading and here we go. On May 30, 2022, John Williams walked on stage at the D23 convention, an annual gathering of fans of Disney and their current very large and very culturally dominant uh, stories and characters. Walking out to the podium, he was uh, painted in the foreground with the orchestra behind and a large projected image of the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, logo in the background. I watched his performance and got goosebumps and became teary. I find it difficult to cry outside of watching films and being moved by pieces of music. This was one of those instances. The piece completed and I went straight to work. My first stop, as with anything uh, John Williams related, was the JW Fan Forums, of which I have been a diehard lurker since study hall period my last year of high school in 2006. On the message board, I was met with equal excitement, with many happy to be hearing New Williams music, others immediately jumping on the It Sounds Like This investigating mindset, and one member in particular transcribing and beginning to... Uh, break down the piece at a pitch and harmonic level. This is what I was drawn to and very quickly picked up my horn to play what I was uh, looking at and had just heard performed. This member was Frank Lehman, a current faculty member at Tufts and Internet's acquaintance who shares a love for Williams, Shirley Walker, and a mutual professor mentor of mine uh, in graduate school, Julie Hubbard. Alongside Frank's transcription of the main thematic material and Astonado supporting textures, another excellent transcriptionist, Chris Sedell, would very quickly return to my mind as in the flurry of absorbing this new Williams piece, I recalled Chris's video on YouTube from a few days earlier I had watched and worked uh, uh, watched and looked for elements that might be shared um because it's fun to just look at those this is a improv sentence look at those uh those sorts of things in williams lexicon star wars lexicon chris's video was a transcription of a cue from star wars episode four a new hope titled obi-wan kenobi i remember my first watch of this was the observation of just how much material is in here there are so many ideas and textures that one could use as a starting point. It was very cool in the sense that it fired up my mind's ear and imagination. With both these transcriptions in hand and the footage from the concert recorded by a fan in the audience, I went to work. Like most of my work in the last few years, I did not start on paper. I just start recording. I made two drafts of the main horn line, which you guys have heard already. Both quite awful to listen to, but helpful in choosing the direction to go. I eventually landed on a version that was informed by my chops, which uh, was a softer opening, not as smooth as a professional player, but 
in fragments at a low dynamic with clarinet doubling to help smooth the sound. I landed on the opening that exists currently in the suite. The next statement of the theme is a bit more heroic, and I want to just remark on that harmonic where the trumpet helps land the orchestra, and I'll kind of edit that in right now, I think. I just like that, and it reminded me of other Williams brass moments, particularly from the um, from the Star Wars films and the and the from the first one through the uh, ones that were released in the '80s. The next statement of the theme is for strings, and is very informed by and nods to Williams' work for Munich. The statement ends on a harmony that reminded me of one that Williams used at the end credits of Revenge of the Sith as well. And I'll break that down a little bit as we listen to it together at the end of the video. Um, the clarinets bring, into, bring us into another area, this one being a confluence of a few different Williams ideas and thematic material. The first is not the exact, but an echo of a horn line from that cue that Chris Seidel transcribed. It is combined in the horns with the primary theme of Battle of the Heroes, which is in Revenge of the Sith, um, while the trombones begin to introduce the dominating pulses of the Empire and Darth Vader that we know from A New Hope. I should mention here that all of this is still being improvised. Uh, record, delete, record, delete, uh, record, delete, record, delete, move over. Etc. Etc. I have a I have an advantage of being a composer musician in this very neat time and being able to write like that. Um, the same goes with my string writing. I'm able to hear as I paint um, with that group and test voicings and lines in a very line in a very live sense. So it's a very um, that's how I, that's how I wrote this most of this. Uh, I have another writing idea about that, about composing, improvising, making a record, and things like that. But it's quite a lot of ideas that aren't directly important for this work. And I uh, do want to mention that, though, as it's important to how I, how I made this. Um, because I make it with improvis improvisatory writing, um, which is very much linked and this is kind of improv reading right now very much slowed down version of a jazz improvised solo in that it's informed by uh what's come before and expressive and uh, com confined to the skills of the performer and knowledge and restrictions of the instruments and uh a constraint no no context of the music that the instrument is in Again, this is better talked about another place, but it's important only in that this work also grew in that way and that style and method of writing. Um, this leads us into a statement of Obi-Wan's theme with a more Williams-type voicing, especially in the horns, uh, lending itself to a more delicate closing. Uh, and I think I was writing about just that just that like 80s classic Williams uh, major seven just the just the the close voicings of, of the horns I think I think that's what I was talking about uh, the next track Inquisition escape had always had begun always with that timpani pulse and I knew I wanted to uh, bring that ostinato element that Frank had transcribed the variations of into the work as it, uh, as it seemed a prominent and important idea in the Williams piece. The rest of this work was really mostly, hey, this would be cool if I try this, then try it, and then try something else because that was right for it. <laughs> oh, man, I can't read this. There's a, yeah, oh, that's the end of the sentence. There's a particular chromatic section where the clarinets sound Obi-Wan's theme. And it kind of evokes a dream-like scenario of which there is no hard narrative to this whole thing. While I was writing, I did not watch the show. And as of this writing, I still have not. And as of this reading, I still have not. But 
every now and again, I would see stills and gifs from the episodes as they would uh, come out in the time that I was writing on Tumblr and Twitter that would inform the final movement, the adagio. Um, and I was, I think the rest of this is on the adagio. And I'm going to take a break for water. I knew I wanted to include a more contemplative piece, especially hearing the echoes of the Jedi Purge Order 66 and the Williams theme for the show harmonically, uh, something Frank also heard and alluded to in his post, both on Twitter and the forums. This is where my not viewing of the show was important. It did not line up with that storyline, but became very personal and a bit cathartic uh and then i just <laughs> talked about kind of getting lost in what star wars is but let's keep going the adagio is for the string or orchestra only and while writing i had uh, thematic material from the other star wars films i knew i wanted to use to give weight to this small narrative that i was telling in this piece that i had in in my in my mind um, in my heart I took notes as I was writing, notes about what Obi-Wan was feeling, what he might feel, what his character has been ruminating and um, reopening uh, on his mind in his exile, his hiding on Tatooine. And I landed on the idea of his character experiencing personal failure. Because indeed, the dissolving of what once was and what uh, has been carried with him into solitary as being uh, as being him carrying a responsibility a blindness and a f uh, a fault um, oh man this is this handwriting is getting worse I knew that the character of obi-wan the characters in of obi-wan and Anakin would meet after seeing the actors at the Star Wars celebration and the subsequent interview PR Blitz. Uh, it was also informed by a single screen sc screen capture still of Anakin, or at least a vision of Anakin, in the Tatooine desert, a mirage of something that Obi Wan experienced. Um, and then I crossed out all these sentences. Uh, I can't even read that, but. I remember seeing that on Tumblr and, or not on Tumblr, on Twitter and it informing a lot of what, it was cool because it, it strength, I already knew I was going to hit on that, but it was cool to see that another angle of that meeting and that weight, that, that, um, the mirage type mind, uh, uh projection that obi-wan i don't know if it was like that in the show but at least in after seeing that it was it reinforced my idea of what obi-wan was feeling and the weight he was carrying after seeing the pr blitz during star wars celebration with the actors i knew that these two characters obi-wan and anakin would meet i had alluded to that in the main theme work already and here's where i could go deeper into that and face them off not in a battle but rather put the spotlight on Obi-Wan's internal battle um, with himself in the situation. Um, I went through various titles, and I think those were helpful also in informing early on. Usually I title that stuff after I write it, but in this case I remember going through these different titles, and here they are here, um, Patience and Purpose, uh, Luke and Leia, Trust in the Force, Yoda, Force Ghost. Oh, these are all ideas, sorry. That well yes, both. These are ideas also that were in my mind. That were on a note that were on a note card and I think I transferred it to here. Um Yoda Force Ghost, even though he is he is not dead. Okay, that was my Star Wars logic trying figuring itself out. Um more things were personal failure and personal forgiveness. Anakin's downfall was not Obi-Wan's responsibility. It was the will of the Force. Um, ego hubris is dominating his mind as it puts Obi-Wan as the main character 
but the chosen one is not himself seeking forgiveness for his failure. It's uh, we what we learn from the the larger story is more about Anakin, and then we learn even from the larger story about hubris and um, the Skywalkers, etc. Blah blah blah. Anyway, there's no battle in this story between these brothers. There is no clashing of sabers as on Mustafar. There is no focus on Anakin's character as he has already fallen and become Vader. No, this story, my story, is truly through Obi-Wan's eyes. This can be heard in the Adagio with mentions of Anakin's theme from the Phantom Menace and innocence and, nos and nostalgia that Obi-Wan returns to as he ruminates and processes. A reminder of who Vader is, not just who he was. Obi-Wan does still have, uh, does still have something and uh, not overcome with despair. In this narrative, the characters do not meet and have discourse. It is very much an echo or rhyming of the scene of Revenge of the Sith between Padme and Anakin. Uh, it's purely focused on Obi-Wan with some help from Yoda to remark on his ego, um, and hubris, this is me rewriting stuff again. Another rhyme that we hear again in The Last Jedi. What Obi-Wan learns, he learns to forgive himself, to forgo his ego, and focus on self, to have patience with his knowledge um, that he has of Luke and Leia, which which they are the new hope, and in, in an overall to trust in the Force. And that's what I ended up calling the piece because it was all those things uh, combined. Um, the piece itself moves from a um, grief and internal despair into this hope that Obi-Wan learns and learns to trust. I think these ideas, um, the growth within Obi-Wan, the internal, the internal positive journey, are best exemplified in two key areas of peace where the force theme intersects with these Williams characters themes. The first one, um, and these all are layered and sound at the same time, the force theme, Vader's theme, and Obi-Wan's theme. And then again, in the close of the piece, we have three themes that overlap, the force theme, Luke's theme, and Leia's theme. And those are important to the narrative of this piece and i i think those of you who have listened will maybe or maybe not will have picked up those three themes happening at the at the same time and it informing you what is happening or what what i'm what i felt when i was writing it what would be appropriate yoda's theme appears and represents a uh past teaching in the Jedi Temple, perhaps that Obi-Wan remembers or um, appears in his darkest time to encourage and shed light on the cause of his despair, which is in fact himself that Anakin's fall, or his guilt is that it is his fault, everything is his fault, but it is not. And so I think, I think in the show I remember seeing, and this is a spoiler, so, but when I fin when I had already finished this, the episode when, um, what's his face, Qui Gon Jinn, came out, and so it was cool because I I remember seeing that screenshot and there were a bunch of memes about it, but in my story it was Yoda, but it was I love Qui Gon and Qui Gon has great great music musical material, um excuse me. Um, I write all this as if I had planned out the adagio to remark on these ideas and story points, but it is very much the other way around. The improvis improvisatory nature of how I write informs these ideas first, and then grow back and forth as they feel complete. I completed this suite on June 14th, 2022, and submitted it for release on that day to my uh, distributor, and released a YouTube video that at the same time, um, preceding the availability. Uh, and then I have something that says, save for conclusion. Uh, yes, okay. 
The following are some drafts. Oh, we already did this. That preceded and came after the Inquisition team. Inquisition theme. You'll hear in these... Oh, okay, we talked about that already. Uh, you I talked about that already. Oh, yeah, if I allowed more time, I would have finished developing this Inquisition theme. As it has some cool ideas that intersect and, and speak to other Star Wars themes. Um... But, oh, and then I just talk about what those elements are. But we heard that. Um, conclusion, alongside George Lucas's comments on Star Wars stories rhyming from, I, I think it's from one of the behind the scenes. There's a great documentary for Phantom Menace that I used to love and put on repeat a bunch. But I think he says it there. But just how these Star Wars stories rhyme. And I'm often encouraged and liberated when I write Star Wars music. Um, by a from an essay by Patrick Willems, who's a uh, writer filmmaker on YouTube that shares a lot of good insight on films and stories. Um, Patrick's essay, following the rise of Skywalker, spoke to an ideal that I hold to about these stories that when that we write our own um our own in-between stories or adventures in the cracks of, uh, oh man, I can't read this. Oh, and we, yes, to the cracks and that these characters, these settings, the infinite yet humanly finite um, experience that we attach and bring with us into these Star Wars stories, each of us, each of us brings our, this is, this is an awful explanation of it, but let me not read it. Um, Star Wars, and I talked about this a little earlier, I think Star Wars is, a, is such a wonderful vehicle that we are able to bring our own experiences, our own stories, and almost attach ourselves to different parts of these characters that we see on screen through all, through all these movies and all these new TV shows and um, animations books, comics, all the all this Star Wars related stuff which is which is unbelievably massive. And um I'm encouraged by that because I it is it is so true and I in particular writing this thing I found myself bringing what I would like. Um like I knew I had an idea of this Obi-Wan character from when I was a kid and in uh having the opportunity to have my imagination ignited by, you, you know, Ewan McGregor coming back and Anakin, or Hayden Christensen coming back and Williams writing some new material. It's just so cool and I, it's, it's such a cool, I, th I think, I truly think we do, every, everyone that is a Star Wars fan, they, absolutely bring their own their own self into these stories so much sometimes to a to a bad end or to a to a quite um dangerous end almost almost like a, a religious uh fervor that is a bit unbridled and sometimes in the in the dangerous and sad sad way but um i'm encouraged by how just the coolness of of these stories and these characters and the setting and um how i connect with it and how you connect with it too so um what else do i got and that is star wars to me with all of its adventure action romance mystery silliness uh its catalytic nature to propel our imaginations to create our own story stories is why I love it. Okay, so that's that's what I wrote. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, let's go. Let's just look at the daw. Or let's look at this daw. And eh, let's not look at the daw. Um, musically, we can listen to it together. So I'm gonna cut here, and then we'll dive into listening. B or B. Okay, welcome back. What I've decided to do is listen through the DAW. And I think 
I will talk more tech technically first so you know what I've written and then we can listen to the uh side thing. That's my neighbor. Um so let's do that. So we're gonna listen to the first thing. This is without this is just what you'll hear is just what I've recorded live. So it'll be a little thin, but it'll be cool because I think it's always fun to know what is a live instrument and what's not. So here's the some of the brass. <laughs> So, maybe I did. Oh, there's the Astonado. So let's pause there. I, that tuba, I think I did lead myself to that harmony that I missed, but I just did not fill it out how I intended. So that's a nice realization. But again, I love that harmony that's there, and I, I, uh, um really wish I would have included it. Um some of the other things I talked about earlier are just that that Williams brass the beep bum bum that trumpet thing so yeah that's nice. So let's keep going. Um just after that portion is the Munich nod. Uh here's some more stuff. Oh yeah so here's the Let's just focus on the horns. This is where that A New Hope cue and the Battle of the Heroes and the um, Imperial Empire material from A New Hope 2 kind of meshes all together. Uh, I'm going to just do this line first. So that is the Anakin vs. Obi-Wan, Revenge of the Sith. Ooh, very squirrely. That is the um, A New Hope nod. And then the rest of it in general is... And this is the Empire, like... Boom, 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 the, uh, that's a nod to William's work, and then who is not into... Um, Holst as well um, in the Mars the Bringer War. Um, let's unmute this. Go keep going. Keep going. This is the trombone. Um, So where the, I think I talked about it earlier, the, the horn harmonies, that, that really close voicing in the horns, this stuff, it's, I love it, I love it, and it's very much not into William's um, material for uh, just some, the you know, the 80s stuff with indie and uh, Star Wars stuff there. Um, we have a nice clarinet solo. Cool, that's pretty. Um, cool. Inquisition Escape. This is with that timpani ostinato. This is where I am able to. So that's another. That's an instance where I. That's the edit I did where I, I was able to go back and realign some of the the nature of the nature of brass is sometimes you will um you you have to use your breath and sometimes you have to come early and 
in my instance, it's that, that, and then mixed with the way I'm writing is listening to myself. So I'm, I'm always going to be late in a way. Um, and sometimes, sometimes that's okay because I, um, I like the nature of it not being exact and that it's a, it's a person that, like, if I'm, if I'm looking at an orchestra, all these different people, like, this guy's gonna be late, or this, 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 uh, this person's gonna be late, or whatever, and I like that, because that's just the way it, that's the way it is, and that's the collaborative, um, kind of team, team sport nature, uh, team art nature of what music is, so I don't often go back and, and, and address those things, but this was, this was particularly bothersome, because I think it, it drew my ear consistently back to, wow, that was really off. So it was nice to go back and fix it. Um, this was a cool, I just like this opening section. I thought it was cool. I, let's just see what the horns are doing here. So there's another close Williams. This was another instance too. On the edit, I let's, let's listen to the trumpets really quick. So yeah, I'm cheating there because you'll see one, two, three, four, five. I try to limit my. I mean, if Williams very likely has these these this amount of trumpets. Um, and there's a great podcast where he talks, or um, the principal horn of a lot of these scores, um, the newer ones, talks about Williams' voicings as the horn player. And he does, he, he has three trumpets, but then he also has another trumpet doubling the horn section, another trumpet doubling the, uh, the higher end of the trombones. So this is Williams appropriate, but I think when I tend to write, I try to, I try to be pretty um what's a good word maybe efficient with my orchestra size so anyway the point i'm getting at as i during that last edit i revoiced or rather i mixed differently uh this harmony here by the brass i'll play it again <laughs> What it was going on previously was that high trumpet, um, it was there, but you couldn't hear it. And that would inform my ears and give this harmony a different shade. So it wasn't as, uh, it wasn't as, um, what's a, oh man, I'm so bad with descriptors right now. It, the tone of it was too dark and I, I wanted it to be brighter because these types of horn, these types of th thicker harmonies in William Star Wars music tend to be cool, heroic moments, or like a, or like important in the sense that, in a in a positive thing. And the way that this harmony is set up, if that voice is not heard, um, it will give you that, that darker blast. And so I was able to go back and and raise the um raise the volume of uh of that particular pitch in the trumpets which was helpful but let's keep going <laughs> So there's that ostinato. In the strings, I snuck in the bop 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 bop. There's a a little sneaky imperial march, bim bum bop, bada bop 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 bop. Somewhere in there. Well, not somewhere in there. It's it's like the final. It's the third to last statement. 
Um, so that that's the thing that is there. Um, this one, they, I think I this. I'm just pretty good. Let's just break it down. Cool. So that's the T-bone. These are trumpets. Here's the horns. Cool. So all those, I I really love that harmony. I think it's sweet. Um, before when I was talking about the improvisatory nature of how I write, these are the cool things that happen because of that. So I I think I stacked. I don't I don't know which one I did first, but I play off another line so I, I may have I may have recorded I probably did the horns first and you could hear the spit rattling in that one. Yeah, I probably did that. So off that you hear that and you can go so many directions. But and it just happened I probably did T bones next. And yeah, it's just I don't know. What am I trying to say? I just I just like that harmony and the way that I write allows me to allows me to kind of find those cool harmonies and and um and play into them well. Uh next section we got I think clarinet stuff. Oh yeah, this is a nice section um, between the harp, uh, first violin, and clarinet section. Um, I like that section a lot. Oh, and here's that kind of dreamy, watery, some Star Wars low brass riding with mutes. Cool, and that's that um chromatic kind of uh, dizzying statement of Obi Wan's theme in the clarinets there. Just bare, it's bare now, so you can hear that a little better. Uh, and then we got the adagio, which exists looking like this. And yeah, I like that. I I really enjoyed writing that. I really enjoyed writing this whole thing a lot, and I remember not not wanting to go to work because I was so invested in in figure in wanting to know where this was going to lead and figuring out all those puzzles that I was setting myself up for, and um, it was really a joy to it's really a joy to um, write this thing, and I. Uh, uh, yeah, it was great. It was a good um, kind of encouraging uh, time as well. So, all right. So that's that. Uh, I think I talked about everything. I uh, thanks for sticking with me. I think we're this might be an hour. Um, I don't know how much I'll edit it. I kind of just like being uh, chill about it and rambling. I will go and do some audio levels and uh uh because i think i especially in the beginning i think i blew everybody's i think i blew it out with the uh with the audio snippets of the drafts but um yeah i, I hope you enjoyed kind of learning a little bit about that piece um as i'm thinking about it now i i i just i kind of i know that i did not talk about obi-wan's internal st strife as much as i I'm, i think as clearly as i wanted to communicate but um the last track trust in the force I, re I really do i love that i love that piece and i think it's i think there's lots of secrets in it that are um 
that are just telling of of an alternate story uh, route that Obi Wan's exile might have brought him on, and um, I I want to stress the uh, kind of the importance of feeling personal failure and um, kind of ruminating on that that type of feeling and and uh maybe connecting i think maybe connecting you more with obi-wan in, in an alternate sense where he he does feel those things and um a jedi's exile or his exile specifically was um for him to trust in something larger than just himself in this new hope in even beyond this beyond that new hope and um uh yeah i think it's a i think that last piece is a um beautiful example example of the counterpoint of lots of ideas and um the uh, emotional um, an emotional telling of of a internal story so all right cool that's this is number one of a couple of vids so hope you liked it uh you can shoot me a message on wherever you message me or leave a comment if you want to have me talk about something more in this piece or another piece I've written. I know that um, composer friend Runar wants me to do a Skyrim one, so I'll probably do that one next and talk about how I approached the thematic material for for that series. Um which has lots of parallels to how I approached it in, in this particular one. But yeah, we'll probably we'll go there next. So thanks for watching, uh, and I will see you in the next video.